Welcome to 6.1's Math Moment. Today in fifth grade, students learned about situation and solution equations for addition and subtraction. One of the things we talked about today was a situation equation and a solution equation and the difference between the two of them. A solution equation is the structure of the information in a problem and a solution equation shows the operation used to solve that problem. Students also look like at a variety of word problems today and we're going to look at a few of those now. For example, one it says Timothy has three and a half pounds of flour. He has one and seven eighths pounds left. How many pounds did Timothy use? Okay, so in this problem, when I'm looking at it, I know this is how much he started off with, and this is how much he is left with. What I don't know is how much he actually used. So to set up a problem like this, I'm just going to go ahead and write down that I've got three and a half minus. I'm going to put a variable. I can put any variable here. Some students put a symbol here. I'm just going to call this F for flour, and that's going to equal my 1 and 7 eighths. So now I have set up my equation to go ahead and solve this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about what could this F be? Well, I know it's going to be taking away, so this is going to make my number smaller. So now my F is going to be taking away from that 3 and a half. Now, one of the things we tell the students is middle missing minus or divide. So when I look at this one, my middle is missing and it's minus or division. Well, if we look, we do have a subtraction sign. So I'm going to know that I need to subtract. I need to take my 3 and 1 half minus my 1 and 7 eighths. I'm going to show that over here. Now this problem just becomes a simple fraction subtraction problem, which this should be a review for fifth graders. Okay, the first thing we notice is we don't have a common denominator. So I know that I can take 2 times 4 to give me 8. If I do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top. 1 times 4 is 4. And then I look at my problem, and I've got 4 eighths and 7 eighths. So that works out great. I like to cross this off so I don't get confused. Now I need to go ahead and subtract. I notice right now that I cannot take my 4 eighths from my 7 eighths, so I need to borrow. This becomes a 2. I took away one whole, in this case that is 8 eighths, so I know I've got 4 eighths plus 8 eighths, which is going to give me 12 eighths, and I'm going to write that above. So I've got 12 eighths, which is an improper fraction, but I know I need more to be able to subtract. When I take my 12 eighths minus my 7 eighths, I get 5 eighths. Now I need to go over and work with my whole numbers, which is my 2 minus my 1, which is going to give me 1. I need to go back and look at my label, which is going to be pounds. And I need to stop and pause for a second and think, does this make sense? If I take 3 and 1 half minus my 1 and 5 eighths pounds, would I get 1 and 7 eighths? That does make reasonable sense. And we tell students to go ahead and plug it in, which means they would take this answer, they would subtract this answer, and then they should get this answer to plug it in. All right, for example number two, it says Annie went ran a race in 56 and 2 tenths seconds. Trisha ran 2,300 seconds slower. What was Trisha's time? All right, in this problem, we really have to stop and think about the language that was being used because it says Trisha ran 2,300 seconds slower. When I think about slower, I know that's going to make her have a time that is going to be longer than Annie's time. So in this case, when I'm going to set up my equation, I'm going to take my 56 and 2 tenths plus my 23 hundredths. And that is going to give me, I'm going to write down T for Trisha's time. Now, as you look at this um, equation, you'll just see there's a simple addition problem at this point, and students can go ahead and set it up. So what we're, we would do is we just rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite it down here. 56 and 2 tenths plus 0 and 23 hundredths. Again, a quick reminder about decimal addition to make sure that you line up your decimals. And then with this answer, because there's no, nothing in the hundredths place, I would go ahead and recommend putting a 0 there so students don't get confused. 0 plus 3 is going to be 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. Bring down my decimal. 6 plus 0 is 6. And then I just have my 5. So Trisha's time would be 56 and 43 seconds. I would want to go ahead and label that for my final answer. 
If you have any questions about today's math lesson, make sure you see your math teacher.